<clears throat> Thanks for singing that song there, Charles. Um, I gave Charles a little hint of what my lesson is going to be about, and that is when Jesus rejoiced. Um, I do want to thank once again the men for letting me stand here in front of you on while Steve is on vacation. Um, Greg will be standing before us next week. Um, I do appreciate that. Like I said, my, my lesson is when Jesus rejoiced, Luke chapter 10, verse 21, which was read earlier. Um, I'm going to read this again because we need to take that mindset of when Jesus rejoiced. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent of revealed them to babes even so father for so it seemed good in your sight Jesus is re, uh, represented as a man of sorrow Jesus acquired with grief Jesus was maltreated by those around him. Jesus was trampled down by those he came to save. Those that he came to save, they trampled him down. In the garden, his heart was broken by the weight of the great sinfulness of the race. He took great penalty upon himself to die for man. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 reads, But God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that while we were still sinners Christ died for us Christ did this willingly he was willing to go to that cross for us but Christ died for us yet in all of these there was an undertone of joy in the life of Christ Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 reads, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus rejoiced. Christ had been sent. Christ had sent out the 70. Christ had sent out the 70. Luke chapter 10 and verses 1 through 12. That's Luke chapter 10 verses 1 through 12. After these things the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, The harvest is truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among sheep, along, among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if a son of peace is where your peace will rest on it, if not, it will not return to you. 
and remain, to, and remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as set before you and heal the sick where they say to go. And the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the very dust of your city which clings to us we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you that it will be more tolerable in the day for, for Sodom that for that, for that city. <clears throat> he sent them out two by two. Their commission was to go to the harvest. Also, he told them, carry nothing. Enter the city and then depart. Heal the sick. Their return was rejoicing. Luke chapter 10 and verse 20 reads, Nevertheless, do not receive in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Jesus had cause for rejoicing. Thus was his first assignment group of the followers. For this, he had his first group. There had been only 12. Now there were 70 workers. They were obeying Christ's teachings. Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 through 20 reads and Jesus came and spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to obey all things that I have commanded you and lo I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. They were to work. They were to go out and work. John chapter 9 and verse 4. John chapter 9 and verse 4 reads, I must work the works of him who sent me. He, while it is day, the night is coming when no one can work. Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 reads you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden you are to be the salt of the earth Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13 you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its favor how shall it be seasoned it is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under foot by men. They are to love God. They are to love God. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37 reads, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. The work was to be a successful work being done by his followers. By his followers. They were not content for the, the apostles to do all the work. They were not content with this. They were the work. All the followers of Christ are to work. 
This means us also. We are to do Christ's work. Let's take a look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. And the things that they that you have heard from me among many witnesses commit the, this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Most of the great work of God has been done by men who would allow God to use them. Men that God, that these men, they just wanted to work for God. Let's take a look at Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. Abraham. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abraham took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions, and they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed and go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. We can also read, um, take some time to read in Genesis chapter 37 through chapter 50 about Joseph and what Joseph did for, for God. <clears throat> we can all also read in Acts chapter 8 about Philip. About Philip. He rejoiced because he was <clears throat> typical of the great work that would be done by elders, deacons, members, and preachers all working together. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21 reads, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. We have to do the will of God. We have to do his work. We need to be busy doing his work. Also, we can look at James chapter 1 and verse 22. James chapter 1 and verse 22 reads, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. We can see in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 17. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 17 reads, and the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. When the church is united together, great work will be done. And this cause is joy in heaven. When we're busy doing the, the work of God, there's joy in heaven. He rejoiced because of their obedience to him. Let me read this again. He rejoiced because of their obedience to him. Luke chapter 10 and verse 1. We can also read that God must be obeyed in Hebrews chapter 5 and verses 8 and 9. In Hebrews chapter 5 verses 8 and 9 reads, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation 
to all who obey him. All who obey him. Matthew chapter 7 and verses 24 through 29. Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 through, 40, for, through 29. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will like him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Amen. And the rain descended, and the floods came down, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But whoever, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a, a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. He rejoiced because of their joy. He rejoiced because of their joy. Luke chapter 10 and verse 20. Luke chapter 10 and verse t uh, 20 reads, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in, in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your name, names are written in heaven. Followers of Christ should rejoice. Let's take a look at Romans chapter 12 and verse 15. Followers of Christ are to rejoice. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. I love this verse. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 16 reads, Rejoice always. We should be rejoicing that one day, one day we're going to hear those words. Well done, good and faithful servant. In conclusion, thus we have see, thus we can see that Jesus had great reasons to rejoice. Have you, as an individual, done these things to make him rejoice now? That's my question. My question to you, have you done things to have the Lord rejoice? This should be our desire. This should be our desire, to have the Lord rejoice. I have a question now. What about you? This week, have you done things to have the Lord? the Lord rejoice. My question to you is, if not, why not? This lesson, we are to, we are commanded, we are to hear the word. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We are to believe. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We are to repent. Luke chapter 3 and verse 3. I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. We are to be baptized. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. 
read. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is, and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 10. We are to remain faithful. If we remain faithful, we'll get the crown of life. My question is to you, once again, how about you? If you have any needs of the church, if you have any needs, I'm going to ask that you come forward as we sing the invitation song.